Hey everyone, Fish here. Today I am watching episode 6 of Megalobox Nomad. Megalobox 2 Nomad, whatever. Anyways, I'm going to be doing a science analysis, not a full react. So I'm going to go through some scenes, think about, tell you what I think about it, why they're here, so on. So a little recap here. We see Joe actually come back into the ring. We see Sachio getting in trouble with the local... Not local crime, but I guess a local big shot boxer, megalo boxer. And we also see some of the other characters and how they interact with the Joe, and we get a little more about their backstory. We also see Joe going back to his roots and fixing fights, but he does it for a greater cause, right? He he gets the deed back to the to one of the characters, uh, bon Bonjiri's sh uh, shop. Um, again, Bonjiri lost his shop because of Sachio's dealings with the local Megaloboxer. It's a pretty, it's a pretty simple plotline for this episode. I, I just thought I saw, I saw some cool little science scenes, which I was wondering what's going on there, why is this happening, so on. So the first one is at the beginning of the episode with Bonjiri. We see him, Bonjiri, stopping by the old dojo, and seeing joe there and he's just looking i guess and he had something cool at the back of his bike so let's take a look at that <clears throat> okay so on the back of his bike we we see in later the, uh earlier or later in the episode that the character said that bonjiri's out for doing errands okay aaron's doing what because all we see in the back of his bike is this weird looking metal box with some rubber thing with like standoffs and what i think this is is some sort of transformer like an electrical transformer i'm converting higher to lower voltage but why would bonjiri need this i have two theories one is related to megalobox so maybe they have some sort of wired form of megalobox where you can put some massive amount of power into megalo gear which wouldn't make too much sense, I guess, since at least Megalo Gear seems pretty powerful uh, without external an external power source, like a wired power source. Another theory is maybe he needs it for his shop, or maybe he's doing an errand for someone else. Uh, I think he. I think there's another character that works on mechanical things. I forgot her name, but. Maybe it's something like this, because you can definitely see some sort of design here, or you see something here. You look right here, you have you have some metal metal bits with some sort of insulator, that black insulator, and then you have more metal bits down here. I think this is a step up or stand, step down transformer. My thought is maybe they don't have access to like, maybe the power supply to this area is pretty poor. Because it's not a developed part. Maybe they only have like high voltage and then they step down voltage. Or they only put supply like only maybe they only have generator supply. They need to be able to get some higher voltage stuff to run certain shop machines. Uh that, those are my two theories. There it's it's more maybe it's more socioeconomic deal and they just need um more power or like a higher voltage to drive things. So the next scene I thought to look at was girl with the cool hat go we're working in her shop. So let's look at that. So I'm just wondering what she's working on right there. Okay. So I I I, I want to try to tie everything to Megalo Gear, but I, I have a feeling this isn't Megalo Gear. <clears throat> I have a feeling this is some sort of uh like transmission or a not a transmission well a transmission or like a uh transfer case or something it, because it definitely has a smaller design it doesn't look like it has a lot of gears like transfer case meaning like in a four-wheel drive car you have something that can transfer power to the front wheels back wheels so on uh the reason i say this is we see some cool things like right here we can we can see some cool uh we see this like belt that's transmitting power. And that's really all I'm going on off of that. And then we see this like big like bell housing here or something similar. 
um, which looks like it might interface with the engine or transmission. It looks like a clutch disc a little bit. Uh, I'm not too familiar with engines and stuff, but it looks something like that. So maybe she's like a well, a, a pretty good mechanic, although she didn't realize that a certain screw wouldn't fit. So maybe she's still in training. It's hard to say. It's, 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 it's cool uh, either way, though, what she's doing. And I, I have a feeling that they're all going to work together and maybe help Joe rise to the top or help Sachio rise to the top. Maybe she can build a better Megalo gear than Sachio. Sachio seemed in the previous, uh, previously seemed to be really good at software, but maybe he's not really good at hardware. I, I wanted to comment on his gear that I'm going to talk about later on. Okay, so I guess that's what we'll talk about next. We, we see Sachio's gear. Because we see him going into a fight. So, let's take a look. Here's, a, here's one look at Sachio's gear. <sighs> On first glance, I mean, it looks really weak, right? I mean, it already looks bent, first of all. But, so if, if we look right here, it's, it's very thin. It's fairly very thin gauge steel or aluminum. And it's bent. Like, right here, you can see it's bent. And I wonder why it's bent. Why, why does he bend it? A lot of times, if you have like triangular structures versus a flat structure, you can gain extra strength in a certain direction. So maybe it's pr to prevent it from bending inward. So maybe that, that, that's by des uh, a design choice and you don't really care about bending in the um, direction toward the screen or away from screen because the Sacha's gear essentially looks like from the side, if you look at the side profile, it look, sort of looks something like this. And then, of course, it's bent in the middle. But, like, it's not going to bend this way or this way that much because it's very thick in that direction. Whereas, in, if you look at the other view, it's like, it's like, uh, it's sort of like this. Right? And you can imagine it's it's pretty strong in um if a force was applied to this it would be pretty strong in that direction, so maybe maybe he did that by design. <clears throat> His gear just doesn't look that strong for what it is, but maybe he's going for a really like speed build like like Joe did. Maybe he's like trying to be really mobile and agile. I, th I think in a previous episode I mentioned he has two actuators per arm, which may give him a little more strength. It just doesn't look like a really beefy gear. And unlike Joe, Sachio isn't that strong. So I, th I think he needs more gear to compromise for his, uh, his weaknesses. And I think that's where the other mechanic girl character comes in. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, another cool design. Main reason I like reacting to this anime is seeing the mechanics behind it. Megalogear is such a cool concept. So we see a, someone guy called the Executioner. And he has some really cool gear, so let's go to that. We see him come in because uh, Sachio messed up, of course, and the, the guy he was going to fight is injured. So now they have to get the Executioner in to beat up Sachio. But then we see Joe come in and want to fight. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so we, we come off immediately. So this dude, like, bursting fire out of his back. And I have two theories on this. One is more like, oh, he's doing it for show. Like, maybe he has a small propane tank and he's just, like, burning fire. And I'm like, okay, cool. Whatever. My second theory was, what if he was running... He, he still has a battery. He still has a battery powering his gear... But what if he can recharge his battery with like an internal combustion engine? So like he has a small amount of gasoline, he has a small engine in there that's just like pumping away, generating energy for the battery so he can go a little further in the fight. Um, so he can like burn through his battery but have some way to recharge it. Because gasoline has a really short, um, has a really high energy density. It wouldn't make sense because we do know that they actually replace the batteries in between rounds, but... I, that, I, I like that theory. I like the theory that there's a small motor in there that's just pumping away, and then he's just, like, turboing it and, like, pumping in a lot of, like, heat, and then, like, when the, the turbo, like, lifts off, they, the fire comes through. I, I thought that would be a funny 
um, cool thing, like an internal combustion engine Megalo gear. Definitely seems like a step in the reverse direction. Like you're you're definitely not taking advantage of the advanced technologies of this time. For example, it, it's a, it's like a complete juxtaposition against Lou. I think this is a really cool, you know, comparison of the Lou fight, and it was definitely set up this way. In in both cases, Joe is like out of practice. So like when Joe went to fight Lou, he's been out of the ring for one and a half years. He doesn't have any stamina. In this fight, he makes it seem like he doesn't have any stamina. And then in both fights, he Joe loses. In the in the fight against Lou, Joe loses. Inten well, not intentionally. I mean, he he lost, right? Like he just wasn't ready. Lou was an expert fighter. In in this fight against the Executioner, Joe is uh, throwing the fight to help Bunjiri. And then we also see at the end of it that Joe or Sacho is the one who made Joe go away. We do see um, <clears throat> we do see a scene where Sacho is like, "You're not family anymore. Leave." So I. Again, it, it was a more of a backstory episode. We do see this cool fight. I'll just play, play it a little further. He, I, going back to this, it's, it's definitely for show. Because, I mean, he paints his armor that way. He just, like, shoots fire out when there no, doesn't need to be fire. You don't see the fire going on during the fight. So, I mean, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. The last thing I want to point out in this is I want to look at Lou's uh, gear. So he has really advanced gear. So that's it. This point. Here we go. Okay, here we go. All right, so let's let's take a look at Lou's gear. It's definitely integrated. It's a very sleek design. It almost looks like it, there's no added mass on top of his arms, right? It looks like it looks like those are his shoulders. It looks like those that is his arm. So I definitely, I wonder how they do it because you definitely don't want like actuators in your arm. I wonder if they have like molecular motors or like some sort of motor system in there. And then the battery power pack looks like it's just like fused in with the spine. We do know that this type of gear like fuses directly with your like nervous system as well. So that's a really cool. I, it's, it's, I mean, you're, they mentioned the first season. It basically has no delay in anything. And I think you can overcome this delay with like computational thing, computational systems as well. If you had advanced like um, feed forward designs that can like guess when you're about to start shooting or not shooting but about to throw a punch that would work too in in opposition to the, this, this design i think this design's not really great the one that lou has purely because it looks like so much can fail and you're interfacing directly with the body so you rate you face like things like maybe your body's going to reject these types of metal which could be unlikely because there's there's a lot of metals that people use in the human body and it's probably fine. I think one of them's like titanium. You can put in your body and your body won't like reject it or anything. But then you have to worry about like all like bacteria growing, biofilm, stuff like that. So it just doesn't seem very sanitary. Can't really take it off because as we saw with Lou's, I forgot his name, but Lou's teacher. I mean, it caused him immense pain to actually take off that gear. It's not something you can take on and off. Maybe medical technology is advanced to the point where they can just have stuff like this, but I don't know. I don't know if it seems worth it just for sport. I get lose at the top of the sport, but uh, it doesn't seem right. Anyways, that's all I really have to say on this episode. Not not much to really analyze in depth here, other than the gear, which is really fun to look at. Um, if you like this content, consider liking this video, and if you really like my content, uh. James, I also have another person that I react to videos with. His name's James. He's going to be out for a while. If you like our content, consider subscribing to the channel. And have a nice day. Bye.